Tarek is the manliest man in League of Legends, but he is only played in the support role, hardly fitting for such a chad. I have found possibly the strangest challenger League of Legends player ever. He plays a ton of weird stuff, like Vi top lane, Leona top, Rakan top, even this weird thing called Yorick. But his most successful of all of his inventions is Glacial Augment Tarek top lane with Ghost. If you think Tarek top sounds terrible, you might just be as smart as Faker. So let's have a look, how's Faker doing against this guy? Oh, he just got solo killed, and the Tarek won the game. So maybe this strategy really does work. His name is Addy is Helpless, which might actually translate to my AD carry is terrible, which I think we can all agree on. Addy started playing League in Season 5. He began in Silver, doing what everyone does, looking for the best champion to solo carry his teammates. That champion was Master Yi, but he sucked at playing jungle, so he stayed in Silver. So in Season 6 he moved to top lane. His first main was Na, and he loved the huge engage and teamfight presence Na could have, so he played over 200 games of it, and made it a diamond for the first time. Top lane became his main role. He was good at CSing, he could solo kill, and he was practicing his TPs constantly. Sticking with Na into Season 7, he climbed all the way to Master on the Korean server. This already is quite an achievement, and Addy was very happy with it. He wondered, what was next for him? He was a Na one trick in Korean Master. Maybe a pro career? Maybe getting signed by an NA team on a $1 million contract? Instead, he decided to try and invent something. After seeing some Korean Tarek support players in Master, and watching them carry team fights with Ultimate, he thought the champion looked OP. So he picked it up, but really didn't want to learn a new lane, so he just stayed top lane. With the old items, Tarek top was focused on being a bruiser, going for 1 vs 1s. In this first season of Tarek, he struggled to improve his playstyle, and he would need a lot more practice if he wanted to climb. Season 9, he continued to invent new picks. Tank Cassidin top, Tank Vi, and still going ahead with his Tarek, trying to get it to a higher level. This is where he began to try and move as far from the meta as possible, taking Ghost every game instead of Flash. As you can probably tell, he really doesn't like copying the meta. He prefers to invent his own, as a way to give himself an advantage. This guy's off meta before the game starts, but some of the things he does in game, I've never seen another player do, so enemies will have no idea what's about to happen either. With these weird picks, he hit Grandmaster for the first time. Clearly the meta breaking strategies were working. Season 10 with some Tank Galio top, some Ghost Mordor Kaiser, and lots more Tarek, he remained in Grandmaster. In Season 11, after multiple years of practice and perfecting his own meta, he has finally reached a point where he can play against the absolute best players and surprise them consistently to get wins, making it to Challenger at the end of April. It is not often you see someone playing a completely different game to the rest of us, and even rarely you see it working in Korean Challenger against the best players in the world. So you might just think, while well, he's playing Tarek top, I bet he is still an insane mechanical player if he can hit Korean Challenger. Well, no, not really. Addy is not the traditional Korean challenger top laner. His mechanics, they're great, but that is not how he wins games. He has a very specific game plan to win that often doesn't even involve him touching the enemy top laner. This strategy starts in lane at level 1. He takes E. Tarek level 1 is terrible at long trades. He just doesn't have any damage. So Addy simply uses E for poke, annoying the enemy and picking up CS. At level 2, Addy takes Q and his first strategy kicks in. If you've played Tarek, you may know about his passive. After he casts an ability, he gains attack speed and magic damage on his auto attacks. This sounds great for trading, but because becomes OP when you combo it with his Q. With passive and Q, each auto attack reduces the cooldown by one second, so a combo of Q, auto, auto will instantly give you back your Q ability, ready to use it again, so you can keep spamming it in a loop. But Addy has developed the strategy so much further than that. He knows level 2 is an insane power spike. Each Tarek Q heals 37 health, and you can spam it at least 5 times, for a bonus 130 health. But he also has a special set of runes and items to make his level 2 as strong as possible. Time Warp Tonic and Corrupting Potion. With these two together, he can instantly gain about 215 HP during the fight, and he also has biscuits that he gets at 2 minutes in the game. This doesn't sound much, but Tarek's total HP is only 650, so with these, his total HP increases to about 1000, which I believe should be the highest in the game. With Glacial Augment and Ghost, no one is escaping from Tarek. He has crazy machine gun attack speed and 1000 HP. It's surprising even to Korean challenger players, so please try this out in your rank and get some free LP. This strategy doesn't work against every champion, some are too fast or can match your damage, versus tanks like Sion on, it always seems to work. Versus squishy champions, if you can stick on them, it works as well. Surprise is your biggest weapon, and that likely means it works even better in ELO's below Korean challenger. If this works and you get a kill, base, as you'll be out of mana. This game against Silas, he gets the kill at level 2, then just roams to bot lane crab immediately, predicting there's going to be a fight for the crab, ending with a double kill and winning the game soon afterwards. Worst case, if you go for a roam like this, the enemy top laner shoves in the wave. Tarek can then just TP back up to catch it. You don't always have to TP to a fight, you can TP back to the lane after one. If this Tarek sees a possible fight about to happen,
happen, his number one priority is being there for it, not being top lane for CS. If you're in a hard lane like this Fiora, you're going to get poked down early, so you can also base and TP back to get a second full health bar, then start to win the 1v1. So you're level 4 as Tarek. What next? What would you do here? A Jace top lane pushing the wave? Pretty scary, right? You don't want to lose tower plates. Well, Tarek is mid going for a gank, a free kill on Ryze. He then does return top to catch wave and get a free kill on Jace. Even from this point, Addy is finished with laning phase. He got enough XP to stay even, then just starts making plays around the map. This is where it gets really interesting. You could legitimately call this pick River Tarek if you wanted, because he now does not care about his lane at all. Ideally, you'll wait till you get level 6, you get out of lane and you start roaming. The best time to leave lane is after you've pushed in the wave, or enemies start to try and freeze it by their tower. If the enemy top laner is top, you give your team a temporary 5v4 advantage bot side, which lets you get a ton of game winning plays off. Remember in solo queue, the easiest way to win the game is to just win the first fight. This gets him ahead and gets his team ahead, making every play afterwards so much easier. Addy takes TP, so you're has that option, he doesn't always need to plan 30 seconds ahead, he can just respond to a play with TP, or create one himself. Addy's first goal in the game is going bot lane. Bot lane will always be lower level than the solo lanes, so he just goes there to collect free gold. Tarek invents a new, weird path to gank, while enemies assume he is just going back top lane, so when he pops out the bush onto their lane, they're already overextended, and dead. Having ghost here is really good as it negates any enemy flashes. Addy ghosts in and slows with Glacial Augment to let his team catch up. You're level 6, so tower diving with ultimate is really good as well, you can use ult aggressively at this point to make plays, not defensively like a support Tarek would need to. Your goal is not to get a ton of kills, because you're not a hyper carry. His KDAs are full of assists, because he just tries to win mid and bot lane. Yes, your top lane tower will die, but this Tarek is getting such a big advantage bot lane that he does not care about top tower going down. If the enemies are good, his top tower dies fast. But this Tarek is good, so the enemy bot lane will die, and so will their tower. So he's always just trading positively. In these skirmishes, there's always a way to be useful, whatever the situation. Here he is in a mid skirmish with no ultimate. He starts off healing his Silas so the Silas can join the fight, then continues autoing and spam healing with resets, also sending a stun off to secure a kill. A lot of these early game fights are based on auto attacking for heal resets, so having a wave nearby or a tank to auto is important. This lets you reposition while waiting for your E and stay at full health. You can even use ult to stall a fight, which is perfect in solo queue, where no one is ever on the same page or even reading the same book. Press ult, let your team catch up. Similar to a zillion ult, Tarek ult denies a kill and causes the enemy play to take two long, making it a bad play, getting Tarek's team ahead. With Kindred also potentially becoming meta soon, don't forget the insanely powerful, uncounterable Tarek-Kindred ult combo. Kindred ults first for invulnerability, Tarek ults during the ult, meaning it activates just as Kindred ult ends, causing a 6.5 second period of time your team cannot die, and yes, this does win every single fight you use it in. Addy does occasionally return to top lane during all of this, but only if the enemy top has pushed a big wave. He is pretty much on a clock, win bot lane before top lane tower dies, because then the enemy top laner will start grouping. As Tarek you are going to be more useful in teamfights than the enemy top laner anyway, so you don't mind if they're getting more gold and XP. You can see this happening in mid game. Here's a good example of the power Tarek top has compared to support Tarek. He just walks straight at an enemy, stunning Karthus, uses ult to stay alive, finishing Karthus off pretty much solo, he then continues to full tank Karthus passive so he can heal Lee Sin. They pick up a couple kills, and Tarek even almost sets up another one on Galio. You might also notice the secret interaction between turbo chem tank and glacial augment. When you have this rune and item, every chem tank slow actually turns into a slow line. This is perfect for the Tarek slowing playstyle, giving even more CC and making chem tank even better. Chem tank is actually his first item as well. He doesn't buy any mana or damage or healing. His full focus is on creating plays with speed and slows, doing a lot of damage very fast with auto resets, and then rotating somewhere else to do it again. He does not have any mana problems because of corrupting potion and the fact he's very good at managing his mana. He's not wasting it on missed stuns or spamming heals when they're not needed. It's a very common low elo mistake to just randomly use ability without thinking what they really accomplish. If you spam your Q to heal to full outside a fight, you might just be causing a chain reaction. You might not be able to join a fight because you have no mana, and then you might lose the game off it. Addy preserves his mana, only using it when he sees a play he can make. You can have full mana before a fight, go into the fight, do every single thing possible you need to win it, and then finish the fight on low mana. That is super common, but you're not going to run out during it if you're using your abilities correctly. In team fights, your ult is by far the most important thing. The best way to use it well is to think of it as causing an event. If if you ult, enemies will disengage. If you ult, 
your team will walk forwards. So you want to find a time where both of these are possible to get an ideal ult. If you ult and enemies just disengage, it can stop a bad fight, but it isn't ideal. If you ult only to dive, that's great, but then it might not even be needed. So the ideal time is when both of these happen. You stop the enemy engage and your team capitalizes on it, engaging themselves. Like here in mid lane, Tarek is being caught, so ult to stop the enemy engage, saving him while also letting his team get into the fight. This ult fully denies the enemies from taking the fight, they can't do any damage, and also lets his team fight very aggressively to win it fast and win the game. Baron is another one of Tarek Top's specialties. Tarek can tank and spam heal on his team while they're doing it. It's great in solo queue where you often end up with only a few champions left after a fight to do Baron, and lots of squishies as well. You can be the reason that your team can do this objective. Here's a great example. With Tarek's healthy Barons and insane team fighting, one of his best plays is right here. With your healing you can start a Baron whenever, and stay high enough health to turn and fight. If enemies don't walk in, it's a free Baron. If they do, it's a free fight. Tarek ults, using the knockup on Janna as a window to activate it. He then goes in with a stun. Enemies cannot return damage because of the ult, so the fight splits up. Tarek is 1v2 and kinda winning it. He stuns and keeps the fight going, slowing with his chem tank, and his team win the fight. Team fighting is really his specialty, your ult is really really good, and then your other abilities are really good for supporting people. You can use a W on one of your divers and catch enemies at long range to get an engage. Timing your ultimate takes a lot of practice, but when you get it right, it's so good. It is the reason that Tarek is played at all, and it's very hard to counter. Addy bans Jax every game, as split pushers like him can kill tower fastest while Tarek is roaming around, and they also outscale him if he is ever unable to end the game fast. For his build, it is a weird one. Start corrupting potion, it's vital to the strategy. Cinder Hulk is important to get early on. It makes you very strong very early. Ionian Boots next for more CDR. They are insane with Tarek E. Second item is always Randuin's Omen. The AoE slow it gives is incredibly good for Tarek. Great for setting up a stun and great for keeping enemies in place to get more kills. Against magic damage you can then get Force of Nature third, which also gives more movement speed. This should be all you need to win games. If you're playing correctly the game is now over. You've got your 15 LP and you're on your way to Korean Challenger. His runes are also very weird but really important. Glacial with Biscuits and Time Warp for the level 2 play, secondaries are to help with mana sustain, and more ultimate cooldown reduction, so we can make more plays. Thanks so much for watching, leave any champion suggestions or accounts that you found that you think would make an interesting video in the comments.